Welcome, 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 everyone. I am so excited for today. This is my first triplet interview style, having two people at the same time. I mean, even with my even my old podcast I had years ago and with all the interviews I've done over the however many years, I don't think I've ever had two people on at the same time. So I'm very excited about this. This is this is just going to be a powerhouse um, interview, I think, with lots of fun information with amazing women. So what I'm going to do first is introduce the topic and introduce you ladies, and we can kind of jump into the different expertise. But um, I'll start with the topic. So what we're talking about today is human design, which many people may not be familiar with. I wasn't familiar with it until a couple years ago. And then basically in the entrepreneur community and in my business coaching um, uh, mastermind and all of that, it started to become really popular and I it came into my awareness. But even then, I didn't do too much with it until recently. And I really started diving into my type and um, how this can impact your life and how it can impact your relationships. And now it's like blowing my mind and I'm so into it. <laughs> It took a little bit of time, and then I was like, okay, I'm ready for the demon. So I have the textbook right now. So I thought, why don't I just introduce it to everybody with the actual, um, you know, quote-unquote definition or however uh, they actually describe it. All right, so the human design system is the science of differentiation. It shows each of us that we have a unique design and a specific purpose to fulfill while on Earth. Endless possibilities for individual uniqueness lie within our genetic matrix. There are millions of variations of human beings, yet each of us has a specific and unique human design configuration with a clear strategy that effortlessly aligns us to our uniqueness. Human design does not ask you to believe anything. It invites you to participate in a potentially life-transforming living experiment and provides you with the practical tools and information needed to live your life or live, live life as yourself, which I love because it really is like, I think the biggest takeaway is like, if you're living within your design, it's so much easier. And if you're trying to live according to like what somebody else thinks you should do, it's going to be so much harder. So that's like, if you had to like summarize a huge takeaway for me and like what this is, that's it. So let's do quick intros really quickly. So hopefully everybody watching this knows who I am. I'm Kylie Interhume. I work as a sexual betrayal trauma recovery coach. I'm a functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner, and I use a uh, unique combination of methods, including functional medicine, emotional processing techniques, trauma work, and more to help women recover after their husbands, uh, or after they've discovered that their husbands are dealing with porn or sex addiction. And I'm also the host recently of two new podcasts. So Recover You is podcast number one, where Patrick and I talk all about things recovery. And Conscious Christian Conversations is where uh, Tanya and I discuss Christian topics and uh, come from different perspectives. And uh, sometimes we agree and sometimes we don't. It's lots of fun. So <laughs> that's a little bit about me. Let me introduce my two amazing guests. So Megan, wave Megan so everybody knows what Megan is. <laughs> Megan is a wife and mom of three girls living in East Texas, and in her coaching, she specializes in helping women to get to the root of what they're not seeing the results they want in life and business. She's certified in subconscious reprogramming tools like NLP and QTT, as well as hypnosis, just like me. We, we did the same programs. It's awesome. And she's working towards a human design certification. So love that. Yay. Very exciting. Kate, who you have met before, everyone, if you don't remember, Kate has been on fairly recently, um, is a former physician assistant who became a functional medicine practitioner and mindset coach. She blends functional medicine, human design, and nervous system regulation for a unique approach that cultivates a deeper healing of the mind, body, and spirit. She helps women overcome imbalances in their body, reconnect to their own energy, and embody their true radiance to live a life of happiness, peace, and fulfillment. So... For everyone who has not already done this, if you if you are watching the replay or you are on live and you want to just take a second, go to myhumandesign.com, put in all of your little information and get your basic design and strategy because then you will be able to follow along with this a little better and personalize this information to yourself, which this is all about personalizing and taking what works for you and learning how to apply this to your life. 
So I'm really excited to get started here. So one thing I did want to throw in really quickly is that all three of us uh, are Christians. And so this is a topic that um, I know can make a lot of people uncomfortable because they go, ooh, is it astrology? Ooh, it's energy work. Ooh, it's a little <laughs> woo. How do we um, align this with our beliefs? So um, my dad, actually, I was I was asking him, hey, wh- when's your birthday? And like, da, 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 da. I was like, I want to do this thing. I want to find out what your profile is. And um, he's like, who, what was it that he said? He's like, who discovered this or whatever? I was like, don't worry about it, dad. I was like, Jesus, <laughs> Jesus created it. Humans figured it out. <laughs> That's how I said it. And then Meg and I saw you post the other day that this has actually um, strengthened your faith. So I didn't know if you wanted to kind of mention that really quickly. Like, what do you mean? Like, how did that show up for you? Yeah. I mean, I experienced a lot of the same kind of like wonderings, like where did this come from? And then just a lot in the Christian culture is like, oh, no, 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 you can't like, like, don't go in there. But when I just allowed myself to explore it and consider it as like a tool that God has given us to understand ourselves better. And um, it's been really, really eye opening. And it's just, it's helped me understand God's love in such a deeper way that like, he created me in this way, instead of me looking out and feeling like I'm different and like maybe something's wrong with me. Like like that's kind of thought about myself a lot. And so um, it's like been really, really helpful just to help me like love myself as God loves me. And um, like my husband says, he's like, you know, all truth is God's truth. So like, if you can find truth in this, And um, why would we put God in a box that like he couldn't have done something like this? Like that's just making God way too small. So, yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. My my pastor basically said, while we use scripture as the ultimate source of wisdom and sort of the end all be all, he he says, it doesn't mean that there's not wisdom outside of the Bible. So I'm kind of taking all aspects of that and finding truth and wisdom in as many places as we can and then coming back and aligning it with what we believe in scripture. Kate, do you have anything else to add to that with your thoughts and experience? Yeah, absolutely. I I resonate a lot with what you say, Megan, too, because growing up, like, I, I knew I was different and I was scared to be who I was. And so I, I just, I was just conformed to be this person um, that society, my parents and everybody wanted me to be, but it, it brought a lot of just stress and anxiety and overwhelm, um, which definitely led me down the path of like functional medicine and personal development and things like that. But it still just didn't make sense. Like, you know, it, and it, we all go through this, like, who am I? And, you know, what am I here to do? What is my purpose in life? And so discovering human design, it just opened up my eyes and made me realize like, oh no, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm unique. I'm not weird. And, you know, it's okay to be who I am. It's yeah. okay to like use my gifts. And I, and I do see that like, we are given these, these gifts and you can understand what your gifts are through human design. And I too believe like God plants, you know, different thoughts and ideas and things in different people. And they, yeah, through their human expression, express it to the world just to help us understand who we are. You know, we're spiritual beings having this human experience. So how can we make this human experience better, you know? And that's, my thoughts on, on human design is like, once I like learned, this is who I am and, and how to like live my life. It's just, it's really opened my eyes. And now I'm like, Oh, okay. I see why I have these gifts now, why mm-hmm. you have these gifts to me. So that's my, my take on that. Yes. I love it. Like when I, same, like when I started learning about it, I was like, Oh, this, this like explains so much in my life where even, even I've had this experience where, um, I feel like I'm a very nice person. I try to present myself as a very friendly person, right? I feel like I am friendly. And, um, and yet I have had people be very like overwhelmed or intimidated or like, um, like the, like just kind of with me, like, and I, I've never really understood that until I understood that I was a manifester and that's how we are that people either are very attracted to you or they don't understand and they are not. And that has nothing to do with who you are. It's just the way you interact with other people and that's okay. And so even I feel like understanding some of these things really um, uh, helps take a lot of the burden off um, and the stress of like, well, I have to fit in with everybody. Well, no, you don't because you're not actually created to be that way, right? (laughs) 
<laughs> like right. you're created to do things for a certain reason. Like my, when you're talking about purpose, like I'm created to initiate and that's what I do a lot, right? <laughs> like I create, I'm like, Hey, there's a new path. Hey, there's like something missing in the betrayal community. Let's like create this whole new world. Right. So, um, and that's just what we do. And that's when we're like the most energized and happy. And so very yeah. cool. And I, I was going to say, I can speak to that as a projector. Like I'm here to guide. So I want to share like my knowledge and wisdom. And I realized when I did that and people weren't open and receptive, yeah. I was upset. I'm like, why aren't they listening to me? And now I learn, like, no, you have to wait for the invitation. You have to mm. wait for someone to say, hey, can you give me a different perspective? Can you guide me on this? Yeah. So now I start looking for those cues. And now I don't share unless someone asks for it. Yeah. Because yeah. if I share without asking, it creates a lot of bitterness. And we can mm. dive into that too. And so it's, it's really shifted and changed. I'm not, I'm not bitter anymore. And if I share and they're not open now, I'm like, Oh, I forgot to ask. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't get bitter about it. Cause I'm like, oops. Oh, I love that. Well, we're <laughs> asking for you to fun. share here, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> we're glad you're here. All right, cool. So let's jump into the overview of human design types. So there's generators, manifestors, manifesting generators, projectors, and reflectors. So Megan, I know you're going to introduce the first few. So tell us what the heck are types and how, like if we are a certain type and someone has looked up their profile, like what does this mean? Yeah. So the types are really just dependent on what that body graph looks like. So if you've got your chart in front of you, you have those strange looking centers. Some of them are colored in, some of them aren't. So that's really just going to be what defines your type. So when you got your chart, it should tell you what your type is. And so, yeah, there's five different types. Um, I'll talk about generators first. So generators make up a good chunk of the population. Um, generators are the people who can like work, work, work. They have this consistent energy. And when they find something that really lights them up, they can just work like they're the, they're kind of the people who like a nine to five is made for. They're the people who who can like work, work, work. And they're like, this is amazing, especially if they're really loving what they're doing. And they're like just finding so much joy in that. Um, they experience frustration if they're not living in accordance with their design and they're not feeling that alignment. And they will feel satisfaction when they are like living in how they are meant to be living. Mm -hmm. um, and then they're, they're here to respond. So um, generators, like my husband is a generator. My oldest daughter is a generator. Um, my husband has like ideas coming in his head, like all the time. Generators are just like kind of bombarded with ideas. And if you, I've heard it said like, you know, you can use like the rule of three, if you're a generator, like if you kind of get the same idea, like three times, maybe it's time to think, is this lighting me up? Do I want to continue like with this? Do I not, do I want to pursue this? Um, you don't have to act on every idea that you cut co that comes into your head. If you're a generator, um, you can change your mind at any time. You don't like have to finish something. If you decide, you know, this isn't exciting to me anymore. Um, and it's really about like following that, um, just that joy, like inside of you, is this really lighting you up? Um, I heard the other day that a generator life should feel magical. Like when you're working, when you're like, whatever you're doing, you should really strive for that feeling of like, this is like so exciting. This is why yeah. I'm here. Um, so that's a generator. Um, the next one is manifestors. So manifestors are more rare. There's like 9%. I'm a manifester. Eileen's <laughs> a manifester. I know. Um, Where's those so special? Like not. 9% <laughs> of the population, I think, is manifestors. Um, and manifestors are here to initiate and create and kind of like be trailblazers. Like we start new things. I've heard it like the fire starters, um, which can be kind of a hard path because people aren't always going to understand what you're doing because you're doing something new. So it's like, I'm going to go do this. And you might get a lot of pushback. Um, you might have people who don't understand what you're doing. And that's what Kylene was saying earlier. I mean, some people are going to be totally magnetized to you if you're a, ma if you're a manifester and some people are going to be repelled and that's for your own protection. So that the people who are following along with you are like all about it and they're going to support you and whatever. So the manifester we're here to initiate and in order to kind of clear that path, we have to inform on what we're doing. So if you're a manifester and you're just like kind of going around doing your own thing, no one really knows what you're doing. And if you're not 
informing the people around you what you're doing there you might you're going to meet a lot of resistance so the the what they call the not self thing for a manifestor is anger so you might find like anger resentment like just feeling like oh this isn't working that's usually a sign that you're not informing what's happened or what you're doing or what you're thinking um and then the 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 um signature is peace so when a manifester is in alignment, they're going to feel peace. And when they're not, they're going to feel that anger, which can come up in a bunch of different ways. Um, and then the there's also the manifesting generators. So that's kind of a combination between the generators and the manifestors. Um, they have that consistent energy that a generator has, and they have the ability to initiate more so than just a pure generator. Um, so I've heard there's kind of a spectrum, like with manifesting generators. Some of them like tend more towards generators. Some of them tend more towards manifestors. But the idea is they they still respond like a generator, and then they can initiate and inform. They kind of carry qual they carry traits and qualities of both of those types. Yeah, Kylie. Yeah, this is super fascinating because my husband is a man gen. And he lives like a generator. I'm always so jealous of his energy. I was just thinking about this the other day. I was like, it's like a, it's like an energy tank that he has so much energy every day. He wakes up and he has it. And then as the day goes on, it's like very consistent. It's like his pattern is just, he can go, 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 go. And I've always been jealous of that. I was like, I want that so much, but it's just not who I am. And that's okay. But I do see that, um, that spectrum a little bit because, he, you know, learning about manifestors and kind of communicating with him about this and learn, and he knows that he's a man gen now and all this kind of stuff. He, um, he also does go through these initiating uh, cycles and it may be a little bit of time, but like he, he will have something initiate it and then, you know, implement. And that's the other thing about a generator, right? Like they can get really good at the implementation and go, go, go. So he'll implement and see the results and all this kind of stuff. And then it may be a period of time until he has another creative initiating cycle. Um, but I feel like he is so good at utilizing all of these within his job. Like he has the energy, he has the initiation, and then he has the communication and follow through. So it's like if you want to see somebody like um, – really living in their design. I feel like he's a good example of that. <laughs> While the rest of us are out here just trying to like figure out what the heck are we supposed to be doing? How can I utilize this? He's like, I just intuitively do it. But <laughs> anyway, it's yeah, interesting to I mean, learn about and watch. Yeah. I think that's something really interesting that I don't think human design tells you anything that you don't already know about yourself. Although it might point things out that you've tried to change or like yep. push aside, mm -hmm. like, um, it kind of gives you that validation of like, oh, right. Like that's, that is who I am. I need to just embrace that instead of I'm going to go change myself and be like somebody else. And Kylie, you brought up a good point that I forgot to mention about manifestors. We do not have that consistent energy. We have more like cycles. So we'll have a phase where it's like, okay, I'm, I'm ready for something new. And then we have the energy, like a burst of energy, like I'm going to initiate this and I'm going to go, go, go. And then we'll start to feel like, okay, I think it's time to hand this off. Like it's kind of our job. We can find a generator or projector, somebody to hand it off. They can improve it or something. And then, and then we rest and reflect. So we have those like four seasons kind of to each of our initiations. So we, we weren't manifestors. were not designed to start something and see it to completion. We're here to start it and then hand it off and then wait for like the next urge for some to start something else. So yeah, the man manifesting generators, man gens, MGs, I've heard them called all of them. Um, they, they have a little bit of that manifestor, then they have a, a little bit of the generator combined in a unique way based on their yeah, chart. So that's cool. Um, that's a cool example of your husband. Yeah. Yeah. That's super cool. Kate, why don't you tell us about projectors and reflectors? Yeah, absolutely. So projectors are about 20% of the population. So there's a little bit more of us than the manifestors. And uh, we're here to, to be the guide. Um, that's really what we're here. You know, we, we can definitely see things from different perspective. I love, I love learning. Like we're supposed to like spend time just learning so much. And then kind of like very similar manifestors. Like I know, Kylie, you shared like you love to learn and then like share it with the world. Us too, we're just here to be the, the guide. So we make really great, um, you know, like that's like, as I went into, became a PA in functional medicine, I'm like, oh, that makes sense. Cause I'm here to guide people on their journey to, to healing. So, um, so yeah, that's one of the things about projectors. Also our energy ebbs and flows too. 
and that's something I, I realized because I um, was in a couple different masterminds to learn how to grow my business. And I realized like a lot of the strategies and things were manifestor generators and, and manifestors. And I'm like trying to keep up with everything, burning myself out. And I'm like, well, what is going on? And then I realized I'm like, oh, I can't just go, go, go like that. <laughs> Or like the generators, you know, you guys definitely have, you know, you guys have that burst of energy, uh, which I may sometimes get, but, but for me or for projectors, it's really important that we prioritize rest all the time, <laughs> just because we absorb a lot of energy. We, so the mm. projectors and reflectors are non-energy types, so we don't generate our own energy, um, but we also have to be very careful and not absorb negative energy and also make sure we're prioritizing a lot of rest and that's something I realized like I can't do the nine to five I used to work 12 hours at an urgent care and I was exhausted all the time I don't know why because I couldn't I couldn't sustain that and even when I started my business I was doing a nine to five now I work 10 to four and only see clients four days a week instead of five because I realized how precious my energy is and I want to show up as my best self when I'm guiding my clients. And so I've really adjusted my schedule to support my energy, but I also have to wind down at night because if I don't wind down at night, that also impacts my energy too. So just making sure, I, you know, as projector, getting that quality sleep, making sure you're resting and restoring yourself all the time. Because I found that if I do get a burst of energy, if I go, go, go like a manifester, I'm going to burn myself out too. So, so yeah, I've had to really learn... Um, learn that and just uh, really just focus on on that that energy because when I am supporting my energy then I can I can really uh, help guide others and I can also create too so I enjoy creating different things and ideas for the business but when I'm stuck in that yeah um, go 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 mode I'm burning myself out and that affects that but also for projectors their their signature is success which has been interesting because projectors are susceptible to being, you know, conditioned by society and the world around them. That's what I discovered had happened to me when I was a young child. So I've been going through my own deconditioning process and just shedding a lot of uh, a lot of beliefs and patterns and conditioning and things that I had taken on from from other people. Um, and so I realized, like, my definition of success was not. Um, making me feel happy and fulfilled in my life because I was focusing on like success equals, you know, making a certain amount of money. And so I've really shifted my definition around what success is because our, our thing as a projector is like I shared before, it's like waiting for the invitation because we have so much to share, you know, insights and knowledge and tools and things. But I had to shift and just say, you know, I'm going to wait for the invitation. So I feel successful when I'm invited to share my insights and my perspective, that's mm -hmm. what success is for me. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so just, uh, also I have, I, part of, we'll dive into this a little bit, but I'm also, um, a splenic authority. So my authority is so open to my intuition, which I've always known. I've, I've, you know, very intuitive person, but in the past when I didn't listen to my intuition, it ended, I ended up in a lot of bitterness, you know, and that is my not self theme. So when we are not, you know, waiting for the invitation, when we are, um, yeah, not nourishing our, our energy and um, doing things that are not in alignment as a projector, we can experience a lot of, a lot of bitterness. And so just really learning about these things as a projector has really shifted the narrative for me. So just deconditioning and just you know, just owning more and more of who I am. So that's a little bit about, oh, and listening to my intuition too, instead of ignoring it, because <laughs> that's yeah. a danger as well. But yeah, as, as far as reflectors go, um, they're the most rarest type. In fact, they're like 1% of the population. But I still have yet to meet one. You know, I have yet to meet one, but I did pull my audience and I had a couple people that are following that are reflectors. I'm like, oh, that's so cool. Oh, wow, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because awesome. re yeah, reflectors are very, very unique. They are also non-energy type too, and they're here to just reflect. They're basically a mirror of of the environment. They're a mirror. So, like, like as a manifester, if you meet a reflector, they're going to mirror back to you who you are, which is really cool. So they have. Um, oh, I didn't talk about aura, but 
a projector has a very penetrating aura. It's like very intense. Like I can see into you, like I can feel you. <laughs> and that can repel a lot of people, especially when they're not open to being seen, you know, uh, from a projector. And so that's what I realized too. Like, okay, if I share my knowledge and my, you know, my, my guidance and tools and things like that, and I have a very penetrative or I can sense things and people aren't ready for that. I've been rejected. So, um, because I have that very penetrating aura, but reflectors are just having a reflecting aura, but they also can like, uh, sample, sample different types of auras. They can sometimes take on the other roles so sometimes they can take on a projector role or a manifested role or managing or generator role. Um, they're like chameleons. They're like human chameleons. Exactly. Exactly. They're, that they're sounds like, like a superpower. No wonder there's no. only 1% of them. <laughs> <laughs> right. So they have that ability to do that. However, when they're taking on different roles, it's, it's still not who they are. So um, it just has to, to feel right in that moment to, to be, but they can also reject energy too. So they can reflect back, you know, certain energies, but they can also reject certain energy. So they're here to like kind of sample, test their environment around them. So it's really important that they find an environment or a community like where they live and where they work that's going to support them. Because if not, they're um, not self theme is disappointment. They're going to experience mm. a disappointment in their life. Um, mm -hmm. their success mm -hmm. is excitement. So finding that community that just like really fills them up is going to give them a lot of excitement. And so, so yeah, they, they absorb a lot of, a lot of energy and reflect it back to the environment. So they're really, really interesting, cool types as a, as a reflector. Yeah, that's really interesting. It sounds like that would be, and with the projector too, because of the energy and the aura that it feels like reflectors and projectors would have to be almost even more careful about set, setting boundaries around who they're around all the time because you don't want it to be constantly fighting a negative energy or a negative environment or a negative community. You want to be absorbing things that are going to inspire you and encourage you and empower you and, and help you like step into like who you actually are as opposed to constantly having to like self-adjust or like work on your energy and um, dealing with all that kind of stuff. It is interesting because I know a lot of projectors which is really interesting, um, like, like so many, like so many projectors. And um, they're all awesome people. And they do, mm -hmm. like I can, now that I know this, I, that's so true. Like they are more energetically sensitive than yeah. a lot of the other types. And um, I just, it's really interesting. I wonder if in general that would lend them to be more intuitive, like when it as like energy workers, for example, yeah. um, it, energy healers and things like that, if they were, if they leaned heavily into that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, and I realized I, I w absorbed a lot of people's energy, even my parents and my sisters. And, and I had to learn that I had to learn to just really set clear boundaries into, you know, allowing certain people to speak a certain way or, you know, even just connecting. And I've even had some clients, you know, that just weren't happy that were triggered or whatever. And I had to learn to set just very clear boundaries because also there were some clients that would try to take advantage of my energy, yeah. you know? Um, so, so I've been yes. very mindful of like allowing certain people, especially if I sense that this, okay, this person's going to be an energy drainer. I set very clear boundaries, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so that they, they don't drain my energy. Um, cause yeah, I, I'm like, I, I have to like really be intentional and restore my energy every single day. So I had to set a lot of clear boundaries with my family, my parents, my sisters, even, even certain clients that I work with, mm -hmm. because if not, like I was just, I was just energetically drained. So yeah, it is really, really important for, for projectors and reflectors, um, to set that, those boundaries. And another thing too, about reflectors is that. Um, when it comes to making decisions, like projectors tune into your intuition and usually like that first response, like you intuitive, it's just that inner knowing that, yeah, you make that decision. Reflectors have to wait like a whole lunar cycle. So they have to base their decisions, wait a whole lunar moon cycle in order for them to make a decision. Yeah. Mm. So I'm like, they require a little bit more time. So if you know a reflector and they have to think about it and you don't hear from them for a whole month, it's okay. Like they're, they're going based off their design and making sure they're making the best decision for themselves. So, you know, in this society, we're just taught to like make decisions very quickly. And it's funny because I used to, um, 
I have a, a mindset mentor who now I understand she's a Manny Jen. So she makes decisions very, very quickly initiate, you know, and I'm like, well, I got to tune into my intuition first. And, ref- and then if there's a reflector in the group, it's going to take them a whole month, you know, for them to <laughs> make a decision on something. That's so, so interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really, really interesting. So it's like, okay, if someone's taking their time or you have to like tune into, well, we can dive into, you know, the authorities, but like, it's okay. Like that's how they're designed and, and don't make them wrong for that, you know? Yeah. All right. So let's, that's a good uh, segue into authority. So what is an authority? There are three types, right? I think just three sacral, emotional, or splenic. No, there's more. There's a lot more. Okay. So we're We're just just going to cover three. We're just going to talk about three. Okay. See that this is why I have you guys on. I don't know anything. I'm, I'm a a little baby learner here. Um, Okay. So we have today, we're going to talk about sacral, emotional, and splenic. So what, what is, so basically if you fill out your chart and you figure out like the biggest, the biggest overview is your type. But then you're going to get things like your profile lines that are really um, going to tell you a lot about who you are, like how you work consciously and subconsciously, and then learning about your authority. And if you understand your profile, your um, or your type, your profile, and your authority, those are like the three most important things. Am I right? Yeah. So they okay. say like strategy and authority, if you can even just strategy, master okay. strategy and authority, which strategy is determined by your type. So yeah. like strategy and authority, if you can live by that, like a lot of things are going to start working a lot better for you. Okay. So let's talk about this authority. Then what does that, what does that mean? Um, authority is just kind of how you make decisions. So okay. um, it's very much dependent on your chart and what that looks like. There are a lot of different authorities more than what we're going to talk about today, but um, we'll talk about three of the most common ones. So um, most, a lot of people think that we make decisions in our head, which is not true. Um, No one makes decisions in their head. Your head actually just kind of gets in the way (laughs) of you making a decision that's right for you. Um, And, like your actual like true decision-making spot in your body is determined by this human design chart. So for sacral authorities, um, this is going to be either generators or manifesting generators are the only types who can have a sacral authority. And this is going to be like kind of a gut, like I feel it like a yes or a no, like a, they're just going to know. Like, so if you say, do you want to go to Thai food or do you want to go to Chinese food? They're just going to be like, Oh, Chinese food. That's what I want. Like, they're just going to, they're going to know it's going to be a yes or a no. Um, and it should really like some, some, I've heard some generators say they can like feel it in their bodies. Like if they're really tuned into it, like they can like feel like a tingling, like, Ooh, like that's what I want. Like, it's like that whole magical, like they, their yeah. life should be magical and their decision yeah. should be like totally lighting them up. Um, and with generators, and it, I've heard too, like, it's like they really, it needs to be like a hell yes. And if it's not a hell yes, it's a hell no. Like it has to be yeah. so like, this is the right answer. Otherwise it's a no. Yeah. Yeah. And, Mm-hmm. And feeling it in their body it could be like even like a butterfly sensation, just like where your stomach is, or just like that heavy sinking feeling if it's a no. Um, so that's like kind of like the physical sensations that people can feel too. Mm-hmm. And I've heard, you know, if you are really new to human design and you're like, well, I've been making decisions in my head, I make my checklists, I do my t- whatever, <laughs> um, start with really small decisions. So, like, yep go to the fridge, open it and say, do I want this? And, you know, tune into that authority and really try and think, don't think, feel into what is the right decision for me right now. Like do, do it on things that don't matter. What yeah. shirt do I want to wear today? And then you can build up that trust in yourself that you can make this decision, the bigger decisions using your um, human design authority. Um, so then emotional authority, so sacral authorities should be pretty fast. Um, it should be like a, in the moment they make decisions, generators and manifesting generators I've heard shouldn't really make like five year plans because they really should respond in the moment. Like, is this right for me now? Great. I'm going to do that now. And then you can like pivot later on. Um, the emotional authority is going to take longer. So people with an emotional authority have what what's called the emotional wave. So you have a wave. It will look differently depending on how your chart looks or it'll feel differently. Um, some of them it's like, 
like it, it's like a buildup of emotion and then you need to like release that emotion and at that after that wave that's where you make your decision so you do not make a decision when you're emotionally charged if you are this emotional authority you need to let the wave happen write it out and then once it drops down to like the neutral that's where you can make that authority or th your decision and feel into what feels right right now um so I've heard like two days is kind of like a general frame of reference. So if you have a decision, ride that wave, wait, like wait two days and then see how you're feeling about it. Um, you can do a lot of different emotional processing tools to really like get those emotions like moving through your body. Um, and I think it's going to be a little different for everybody. I was just learning last night. Some people's emotional wave is like really extreme. Like it's like, oh my gosh, I feel every emotion and then it tanks. And then some people is just like, oh, okay. Yeah. And so it's, it really depends on you. So if you have an emotional authority, start paying attention to um, like, don't fight your emotions. It's not about like, oh, my emotions are keeping me, like holding me back. Like your emotions mm -hmm. are what's going to be guiding your decision. And so really start to honor them and respect them and like, just embrace this is, this is my process. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah. Any other thoughts on sacral or emotional, or do you want to move on to Carly, You can speak to a little bit on emotional, right? Uh, no, I mean, I am one, but, uh, <laughs> I'm just taking notes over here. Like, okay. Yeah. 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 Makes sense. Um, I was, uh, kind of forgetting about the wave thing i think maybe somebody had told me that before um but that's really interesting yeah it's like don't i i appreciate that reminder that uh that it can be short or it can be long um but uh don't be making it in the heat of the moment and actually thinking of so thinking back that is how i work because like even with the betrayal and everything i kind of sat back and i was like okay i know that there's a lot going on right now and like i need to process this and like figure out what's happening before i make any decisions moving forward and um wait until you're kind of in a different place to actually make that clear decision you know so that's looking back because that's probably one of the most dramatic uh, examples of it <laughs> But I was like, oh, hey, I did that. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I will say, so um, generators and manifesting generators are the only ones that can have a sacral authority, but um, generators, manifesting generators, manifestors and projectors can all have an emotional authority. Okay. So this one is, um, you're going to have a lot more variety and it's going to make different kind of interplays between, you know, an emotional projector is going to be different, going to make decisions slightly differently than like an emotional generator, right? Because mm -hmm your body graph's going to look different, but the, the whole idea of, yeah, like writing that wave. And I love that idea, Kylene, of just looking like once you have this information, look back on your life and think, how have I already been doing this? Because it's not, like I said, it's not going to be, oh, now I have to live totally different to how I've been living. It's like, you've already been doing this and now you can be aware of it in mm -hmm. a way that's like empowering to you. Yeah. I like that. All right, Kate, what is splenic authority? Tell us all about it. Yeah, absolutely. So splenic authority is is really just based off your your intuition because a lot of us is like when we have this the splenic authority, you know, we're we're like we're feeling our environment, we're feeling what's happening in and also inside of us too. And we're just going based off of instinct because at the end of the day, we just we just want to make a decision that protects us, you know, that keeps us surviving and thriving and, and going and moving forward. So um, if, you know, listening to my intuition is just like, kind of like, okay, you know, is this a good, good thing to do or not for me? Is this going to like harm me or is this going to be good for me kind of thing? So really just tuning into my intuition has been really, really powerful for me. And um, for me, it's just like, it's just, yeah, that, that inner knowing sometimes it's like, just this like little nudge that I feel or sometimes like it's, it's like a thought or a voice in my head. Like, you know, it's, it's very subtle. It's not mm. like very powerful punch, like a, a generator. <laughs> it's very subtle to the point that sometimes it can be missed. So just really learning to, you know, hone into that intuition is really, really important for that splenic authority. Um, because yeah, I, I, sometimes have, have missed it in the past. And then looking back, whenever I made a decision, I'm like, 
darn it, I should have listened to my intuition. That's actually another really good point is um, to look back and see when did we make a decision that we re regretted yeah. and what led up to that and how did it feel in our body? Because we can usually like look back and assess, okay, like if I don't know how it feels when I'm making mm -hmm. these decisions, like if you're, if, if someone's listening to this and they're going, oh, I have no idea what this means look back both at when, how did you know that you made a right decision before? How did that feel? When that decision was done, what did that feel like to you? And when you made a decision that you regretted, did you have any feelings, any red flags, any thoughts, any sensations leading up to that, that you kind of suppressed or ignored? Cause I can totally, yes. <laughs> so many red flags, right? <laughs> like I can, I can totally say that. And, um, I'm really, really learning, um, to, trust that, you know, and I'm being so reminded to trust that it's like your, your intuition did not fail you. And I think just kind of to bring this into the betrayal community, so many times when women are betrayed, they immediately go, well, I can't trust myself. I can't trust my intuition. I can't trust my gut because I made these wrong decisions. I, I didn't see this coming. I was so right. There's two things there. One, you can't control other people, and some people are just really, really good at lying to you. But two, a lot of times there are things that were suppressed or overridden or like your gut was telling you something and it was not being responded to, right? So both of those can be true or both of those can be um, separately true. But um, depending on what your individual situation is, looking back and being like, was I just really, really lied to really well? Or was there something that I uh, just was suppressing. And if so, that should actually reiterate that your body uh, does work for you. It is true and you can rely on it. So looking back, what decisions were positive that can, and how did I feel? And what decisions were negative and how did I feel? And like Megan said, doing it, like if you really don't have any place to start, do I want an apple or a banana today? And how do I know that's the right choice for me? Right. I was doing that with, with a client recently who's a generator and, um, uh, I think it might have been sacral. And so I was like, okay, just really let try to drop into your body and learn what is the physical sensation of making a d good decision. Because if you can do this with the really, really small decisions in life, then you can build on this and it can help you know how to make the right decision for a really big uh, decision in life. And so, um, yeah, I think this is, I think this is really cool. And another thing too with the splenic authority, so like with sacral authority, it's tuning into your gut, mm -hmm. you know, so the stomach area is where you're going to feel a lot of the physical sensations for splenic authority, spleen, you know, we think of immune system. So I thought it was really cool because I'm like, I have a very strong sense of smell and I never knew like why, because <laughs> I'm like, I can smell things burning like a minute before my husband can. And um, he, he calls me the hound dog because I'm like, I, I can really smell and yeah, and feel people's energy and sense things. And like, I've met certain people, I'm like, they have like, I don't like their vibe. And I mm -hmm. didn't know why. So it's again, it's that in intuitive instinct, yeah. that survival response, you know? Yeah. So so with that spleen, like, our lymph um, part of our immune system is really good at sensing and smelling and feeling, which is like really cool. As I'm reading, I'm like, that makes so much sense now. And I'm like, why I'm so intuitive, you know, with my, with just like feeling energies and even just smelling things and certain, yeah, there are certain smells that just repel me, like, ugh, especially things that are toxic, you know, products mm, yeah. that just with processed chemicals, I cannot be around them. This is, ugh. and cigarette smoke, things like that. But things yeah. that are like, scented with natural essential oils. I'm like, oh, yeah, it smells so good. Like, I, yeah. just, I just rub it all over my body, you know? Love it. <laughs> so in, in that sense, too, like, being able to, like, tune into, you know, your environment into and uh, other people's energy using your intuition can really help help you because then you can, like, that, too, can protect you to set those boundaries around, like, people that are, are toxic in your life. Um, but also like even just products and things that you use to, to help support your health and things like that. And not just, you know, with decision-making too. Yeah. So you're kind of touching on this a little bit, but why don't you talk about how can human design actually support our health and energy? If we are, if we learn about it and understand how to use it effectively, because I can actually, even just from this conversation, understand how it could go the opposite, right? Like if we're, if we're living out of alignment, yeah. we're going to like exhaust ourselves and feel horrible. <laughs> yeah. So the, probably the most common issue I see with a lot of women is, is fatigue. 
just no energy. And the more I learn about human design, I'm like, well, that makes sense. Cause if we're operating yeah. from our not self, if we're not in alignment with our mm -hmm. human design, you know, what happens is it, it really puts us into a sympathetic state. That's that fight or flight response. So as a projector, if I'm not waiting for the invitation, if I'm not tuning into my uh, intuition, I'm experiencing a lot of bitterness. And so what I've learned is like just integrating like energy medicine and functional medicine and human design, like our emotions have different frequencies. And so like fear, anxiety, worry, anger, those are all vibrating at a very low frequency. Anything that's below courage, which is 200 hertz, if you're experiencing those emotions, you're in a survival state. So when you're in that survival state, your sympathetic nervous system's turned mm. on for a long period of time. It creates stress on our body. So it fires up our adrenals and our adrenals are using up a lot of energy, a lot of resources. So a lot of vitamins and nutrients to keep us in that state. Cause you have to think about when you're under stress, you're in survival mode. So a lot of people will experience an imbalances in their body. Their digestive tract doesn't work properly. So a lot of like bloating and gas and constipation or diarrhea. Um, women have a lot of period issues. So a lot of PMS, infertility, um, irregular periods, missed periods, you know, it can create um, muscle pain. So I used to experience this because I was, yeah, experiencing so much bitterness and feeling it physically in the body. I would have tension in my neck and shoulder and upper back and it would trigger migraines because I was just in that sympathetic state. So mm -hmm. you can feel it in our muscles. It can cause a lot of like a lot of the health issues we see today, diabetes and heart disease and obesity. And yeah, even it can affect our, our memory, our thinking and clarity. I, I remember like being in that survival state. And yeah, if I wasn't operating in alignment and, and resting and restoring my body, you know, making sure I replenished my energy every day. I was burning out. I couldn't think clearly. I had a lot of brain fog to the point I was even taking naps. So, yeah, it can really, really affect our health. And like with a, a generator, for example, you know, if they are not trusting their gut and they're not responding, you know, it creates a lot of frustration. So, again, frustration, low vibrating motion puts you in a survival state. If you're in a survival state for a long time, that affects your adrenals. And now, yeah, I've, I've, I've worked with generators who were, were tired and I checked their adrenals, high cortisol. And that's because most of the time they were doing work that wasn't bringing them satisfaction. Mm. Because that's their, that's their, their signatures is doing things that bring them satisfaction. So once we like started working on supporting adrenals, I'm like, okay, look for something that's going to bring you that satisfaction where you enjoy doing the work, you know, not because you have to, but because you love to, because you want to. And that's the really important thing for, for generators. Cause if not, that was affecting her health, lack of energy, um, losing her hair, low libido. She also would gain weight, had a lot of bloating, GI mm -hmm. issues. So just by like calming her nervous system, supporting her adrenals. And then the next piece is like helping her to find that, that job that brings her that satisfaction is, is really important. And same thing with like a manifester, you know, if they're not operating from there, you know, if they're not initiating and forming, but, um, you know, they're going to experience a lot of like anger. <laughs> and uh, my husband's a, a manifester. And it's interesting because he used to experience a lot of anger when he was young. Mm -hmm. And, um, and he also had his own health issues too. And, and so the more he steps into his design is not experiencing that anger anymore. Mm -hmm. and, um, so yeah, it, it's, it's really interesting, like how, when we're not in alignment with our design, it affects our body physically to the point yeah. and create yeah. those imbalances, but also most importantly, it can affect our energy. So he's finding, you know, if he pushes himself a little bit too much, um, he's learning to rest a little bit more. So it's important for manifestors to have that, that period of rest, especially after that energy burst, you got to rest and restore yeah. And that's really helped his adrenals because before he was just go, go, go all the time and just feeling so tired. And, um, and, uh, you know, you guys have that burst of energy, but it can affect you long term if you're not giving yourself that, that rest. So yeah. now when he, when he, you know, is feeling it energetically, he doesn't push himself. He doesn't work out like he used to. He would just like, yeah, go through the, <laughs> push himself yeah. working out and doing all that. And I'm like, that's not good for your retreat. And then it affected his testosterone. So <laughs> interesting. Yeah. Oh no. All yeah. that makes sense. My biggest takeaway though is, yeah. um, is that clearly it was a generator that wrote the song. I can't get no satisfaction. <laughs>
<laughs> it's gotta be. They it's were gotta not be. living in alignment, and it inspired a famous song. So things can still work out for you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. No, that makes so much sense. And um, yeah, there's so much in that. One of the biggest things that you said at the very beginning is that our emotions have frequency. And so as you were talking, I was sort of connecting the dots of this is why meditation where it puts your body in a physical state and you visualize and experience things that have not happened yet, allowing yourself to feel peace, to feel calm, to feel grounded, even if that's not the current state of your life, it can help you actually get there and make decisions because you are essentially raising your frequency and experiencing things in the present moment that haven't happened yet. And so it brings the reality and the sensation of the reality into your mind and into your body so that you can then have a better understanding of how to create it and how to allow it and welcome it into your life, which is which is pretty cool to just like connect the dots because you hear you hear things over here, you hear things over here, and then it's like, oh, this is why it all works together. It's so cool. I love it. Yeah, yeah. so I love this book, Power Versus Force, because he talks about the different frequencies of the emotions and – yeah, I used to experience so much anxiety, which I now I'm like, was that really bitterness? You know, because anxiety, mm -hmm. fear is at 100 hertz. Anger is at 150 hertz. Love is at 500. Peace is at 600. Mm. So, so yeah, a lot of us are operating at a very low frequency because we're not in alignment with our, our design. We're in fact, operating from that not self, you know? And so once we start to move out of that, and I love meditation because, yeah, I've been able to connect to, like, what do I want to experience more? And that's more love, more happiness, more peace to elevate my frequency, to elevate my emotions, to step out of that. And, and by embodying, by waiting for the invitation, by tuning into my intuition, um, I experience more of that, that happiness, that, that peace. Um, because I, I do that. So that's cool. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's like training your body to learn what it feels like before you feel it. But then it's like fake it till you make it almost because you start feeling it and practicing yeah. it. And then it becomes easier for your body to get into that state. And then it becomes your reality. It's like, it's cool. I like it. Yeah. So, so what, um, what I, what I teach my clients is, is the, like learning how to rewire their brain and recondition their body because yeah, yeah I, I mean, especially as a projector, we've been conditioned to operate a, a certain way. So as you go through deconditioning all those beliefs and, and patterns and things that you created for yourself and reconnect and just like prioritizing rest and doing all these things, like now you move into that parasympathetic state where the body's nice and calm and relaxed and everything just, you know, functions more optimally, you know, at that level. So yeah. Awesome. Megan, how does uh, human design, how can it impact uh, relationships? Oh, I think like everything about it can impact relationships. So, I mean, like I was saying earlier, human design has really helped me understand myself. And I feel like if you don't understand yourself, it's really hard to have relationships, healthy relationships with other people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like perception is projection. So like if you're seeing something outside of you and someone else that's like irritating you, likely it's because of something else kind of in your own being. Um, and so, I mean, just for like me personally, I'm a manifester. My husband's a generator. He loves learning about human design because I think it's helping him understand me better. And I am learning about him and it's like, oh, you're not designed to just initiate things. Um, I need to inform you if I want you to do that. And it, it just gives us a different language, I think, than, um, than if we didn't have it. And so um, it's for him, like I can encourage him, you know, are you finding satisfaction in your work? And if not, like, let's find something outside of your work today that you can, that can really light you up. Um, so I think it's, it's really helpful to help support people just how they are designed. And it's so helpful to understand yourself. Like I know that a human designs of my kids, which is really interesting to just kind of like see how that's playing out. Oh my I gosh. I just did this with my yeah. sister, brother-in-law, nie uh, nieces and nephews. Uh, yeah. My head was just exploding. I was yeah. like, there's two generators in that house and three man gens. Three man gens. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> Yes. And I also learned that my older sister and Lots my younger sister uh, b both have the same type and the same profile lines. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Wow. Yeah, it was so interesting. So my head was just exploding with all uh -huh. this information, but I love it. Yeah. And it's, again, it's like, it's just who people are. 
And it it's just gives it like another language to be like, oh my gosh, like my nephews are both little generators and they are always on the go. And me as like me as a manifester, I'm like, oh my gosh, it sounds exhausting. But like, and I'm like, wow, you guys are so busy, but like really they're keeping up with the, the little boys who have like unlimited energy here running yep. around doing everything. So I have a generator, a projector and a manifester daughter. And so they're all different and That's it's amazing. so interesting. It's like really fun to see just, and even to, I mean, so like my middle daughter's a projector, which doesn't match with either mine or my husband's type. And so we've had to learn a little bit, like how, like there was some tension for a little bit. So she's six, she's in kindergarten. And there was some tension of like, she just kept like getting angry and like pushing this back. And I was like, all right, we need to start like inviting her to do things, like inviting her to give her perspective because she has, so this little, she has like a defined head. She has like her own way of looking at things and she would get so mad if we didn't do it how she wanted to. So we're now we're like, oh, why don't you tell us what you think? And she's like, okay, I'm, I think we should do it like this. And she's like, you're doing it not very well. And it's like, needs to do it like this. So she's like, she's like trying to guide us, which is kind of tension. Like with a parent, like you're a parent and you're trying to like teach her, but she's like, nope, I see a better way to do this. I'm going to come in here and show you what to do, which is oh just like, gosh. if we didn't know that, like we might like squash her and be like, no, we like, we're your parent and you yeah. have to listen to it. Like, I think there's so much power as a parent um, coming in and like just allowing everyone to have their design and just trying yeah. to understand a little bit, like, how are they, how do they need to make decisions? And when you see that coming out, like just kind of embracing it. So, Oh my gosh, so I love this ways. so much. So when I found out that Keegan was a manifest, a uh, manifester, just like me, it blew my mind and it explained so much. I was like, because we are the same, that is why we butt heads the whole time. And if you think about how manifestors, like one of the things about us is like, I mean, nobody likes this, but manifesting manifestors really don't like being told what to do because <laughs> we're, we're like the initiators and we're like, we, we want to initiate the way we want to initiate. And we're here to like change the whole paradigm. So like your paradigm is not going to work for me. So don't tell me what to do. <laughs> And um, so looking back, like I had this realization about that the other day. I was like, oh my gosh, I could have done such a better job in the parenting role with him had I just known this, that we were the same and that the reason we were really, um, you know, kind of butting heads sometimes is because we were stepping on each other's design because we wanted to live into our own design and we weren't able then to support each other. And so... Mm -hmm. Like we did our best, obviously, and it's fine. We have a great relationship and he's an amazing kid. And I, I tried very hard as a parent, but I just feel like, you know, you learn these things and you look back and you're like, oh my gosh, that would have been so helpful. Yeah. Like that would have been so helpful just to communicate better. I mean, just, you know, that alone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see yeah. that too with my, my, my husband's a manifester. So yeah, what you're saying about your daughter, like she wants to just share her perspective and her way of seeing things. And of course, my husband's the manifester who's, yeah, like do it. This is how I do it. So yeah, we butt heads a lot. So now I find myself saying like, I understand that that's how you like to, to do it this way, but I have a different perspective. <laughs> yeah. This is how I see it. Well, I think there's yeah. so much there of just like understanding the buttons and, yeah. then, you, and then working around those, yeah. right? Like how yeah. can we... Right. How can we use our design to clearly communicate to people who are thinking a little bit differently and give them the space to clearly communicate, um, you know, their thoughts and their beliefs and their perspective so that we can then say, okay, yeah, that's so many things are clicking in this. I love it. I love that we had all three of us on too, because there's a little yeah. piece of information that's, you know, from everybody that's like, oh, this is an aha moment for me. This is cool. I like yeah. it. Yeah. I love it. What else? Is there any other like big overarching like takeaways or ahas or about relationships or anything that you guys want to share? Um, I wanted to share one thing. So I've been learning that like, so we didn't really go into all the different centers today, but like based on your body graph, um, there's going to be ways that you're, you've been susceptible to conditioning through your childhood, meaning like you know, so, like triggers and like limiting beliefs are really going to be living in some of those like specific areas based on your body graph. So I think like Kate, you mentioned like really working on deconditioning your beliefs. Um, Kylene, I know you and I both have experience helping people with those things. And I, I think it's really interesting to combine human design with 
um, some of this like clearing work that we all do because it gives kind of a pathway of where we can start. So like, oh, I see that you have, you know, this body graph. Let me talk, let's talk about this. Like, how did this impact you growing up? And you're going to be like, oh my gosh, that's exactly how I really, <laughs> we really should start there. So I think it's super empowering. Like if you're working with a coach, like having the coach know human design um, so that they can kind of guide you based on your design. Um, I also think if anyone has a manifestor child that they should come talk to me because um, it's it's hard, I think, to have a manifestor child. It's also hard to be a manifestor child. <laughs> so Stop explaining um, my childhood. I've always said, I always excused it on ADD, okay? I was always like, I was ADD and I drove my mom nuts. And, um, now I think it's just because I was a little manifester and, um, it's all worked out. It's totally fine. Yeah. But I think I that heard, there was something there. Yeah. I heard the other day, which was like, so, oh my gosh, it just hit so, so much for manifestors. Like as a manifester kid, you want to initiate and do stuff, but your parent is like, no, you need to ask permission. Like, no, you can't do that. You need to ask permission. Like, Rightly so, right? Mom, I'm going to go play in the street. Like, um, I don't think so. Like, there's reasons that we <laughs> right. have parents, right? <laughs> right. Um, however, as a manifestor kid, a lot of times either they um, adapt by they stop trusting themselves, which means they don't even ask anymore. They're like, I'm just not even going to bother. I'm not even going to bother, like, following these urges that I have. I'm not even going to try and live this way because someone else is going to tell me no and it's too painful. So I'm just going to tell myself no, which is totally what I did. Like that is like my childhood. And then the other side of the coin is they stop trusting other people, which means they become secretive and kind of lying. These are the kids who are going to act out. They're going to just go do stuff because they're like, I'm not like no one else understands what I'm trying to do. I'm just going to do it anyway, but I'm not going to tell anybody about mm. it. So like, if those are the two options, like they're both so damaging to the manifestor kid, which is why I'm like, let's, let's talk about like how you can raise manifestor kids in a way yeah. where it's like they can have their freedom. So my one, one and a half year old is a manifestor. So we're not quite into like asking, we're like working on baby words right now. So not quite asking permission to like yeah. do things, but it's on my mind of um, how are we going to allow her to have some initiating freedom and still, you know, be parents. So yeah. I love the fact that you out. are learning all of this while your kids are so yeah. young, because mm -hmm. what, I don't want to call it an experiment, but what an experiment to have all of this information up front, because so many of us learn it later and we think, well, and we, it changes our lives and we can use it with our friends. We can use it with our adult children. Um, mm -hmm. We can use it in our day-to-day -day interactions. But what an impact it can make if you can learn this when they're young and start, you know, shifting. And, and this explains so much why every child is different and the same parenting style is not going to necessarily work. And I think probably all of us at some point have tried to do the same parenting style on two different children or whatever and or you know react to two people the same way and it just doesn't work that way and mm -hmm. then we're like why isn't this working i did it worked for my oldest <laughs> child right or like whatever and it's like no they, they have different personalities and this is a big reason why because they interpret the world differently and they're created to do so because their purpose in life is to accomplish different things and so they have yeah. to be able to think through things differently yeah yeah mm -hmm. awesome Yay, this was awesome, ladies. I love this so much. Um, all right, why don't we share how people can connect with you and anything specific you want to uh, let people know about what you're doing. So Kate, why don't we start with you? Yeah, absolutely. So you can connect with me on Instagram at the Kate Vasquez, and that's Vasquez, V-A-Z-Q-U-E-Z, -E two double Zs, because um, it's commonly misspelled. But yeah, definitely reach out to me there. I I'm very active on Instagram, so if you have any questions, please send me a DM. Um, you can also find me on my website, Your Radiant Health, which will be switching to Radiant by Design because I, I realize I'm like, when it comes to healing, it's more than just like changing your diet and taking supplements. We have to do the deeper inner work too. So um, yeah, that will be shifting in the next month or so. But, um, but until then, Your Radiant Health. And um, I also created a program called Already Enough. It's a podcast course because I realized a lot of us are busy on the go. We don't always have the time to just like meet on a certain time on a certain day. So I created a podcast course just basically outlining 
how I went through my deconditioning process of identifying beliefs and patterns and things, uh, just giving, you know, people the tools that I've learned to help me shift out of that state of anxiety and overwhelm, being stressed to help me in that survival state um, to be able to step into becoming already enough. Because one of the limiting beliefs that I had, which I realized most people have, is I'm not enough. Yeah, And that's what generates that, that not self theme when we're not living in alignment with our design is because we don't feel like we are enough. And so I created, yeah, it's called Already Enough podcast course that people can listen to on the go. So you can find that uh, on Instagram and my website as well. I love that. <laughs> Megan, what about awesome. you? Um, yeah, you can find me on Instagram um, at it's Megan Barrett, I T S. M-E-G-A-N-B-A-R-R-E-T-T. Not very intriguing spelling, so you should be able to find me pretty easily. Kate, good job spelling yours out because I think I had a hard time finding <laughs> it. Um, and um, I have a website, redeemingrootscoaching.com, that I do like life and business coaching. Really love like talking about parenting. Really, I just love helping people get to the root of whatever issues they're seeing. So um, I love connecting the dots and helping you connect the dots between like, even like, oh my gosh, why can't I stick to a diet can be tied to like, why am I not getting results in my business can be tied to like, oh, I have a strained relationship with my kid. Like they can all be stemmed from like really like deep rooted beliefs or negative yes. emotions from your childhood. So I love just kind of like connecting the dots and helping people um, work through that and have a really cool process that, um, I would love to talk about. So if you go to redeemingrootscoaching.com, you can book a discovery call and I would love to share more about that with you. Yes. And I have to say, because we went through the same, uh, training program, part of it was actually that you had a buddy that you worked with and Megan was my mm -hmm. buddy. And so she has done some one-on-one -on -one coaching with me and, um, she's super good. So, uh, what she's talking about, the connections are, is really true. Like we worked on like a one thing and I can't even remember the angle it was from, but it was about my fear of being seen. And mm -hmm. since then, cause this was about like two or three months ago, I have seen it consistently show up in so many different aspects of my life. I was like, Oh, like I'm just showing up more as myself and I don't care. And it's like, it's so cool. And I will go, I will walk into more and more situations where I'm like, Oh my gosh, I would not have behaved this way before. And I'm just, and it's not, it's like a great thing. It's like, I'm just being myself and not like stressing about, you know, I'm not like containing myself or putting myself in this little box. And, um, so that is very cool. Cause you want to talk about like uh, healing your inner child, right? <laughs> little manifester child. Um, uh, coming and I mean, I love, life. I love how you just said you're not sure what angle we started from because you it's it's never about like whatever specific issue you're experiencing in the moment yeah. like whatever it was for you I don't remember either but I know we got in there and then figured out oh there's like a fear of being seen like yeah. that's what's underneath it and then we can heal that and then it's like oh my goodness this is coming out everywhere it's amazing it's, we just never know yeah. how much these limiting beliefs and like these our past experiences are really like shaping our life and really controlling our results, which it's like, it doesn't have to be that way. We can clear those and be free. Yes. It was a very cool experience. So two amazingly gifted and talented women on today. I will make sure that you have their websites and their Instagram handles in the, I don't know, description or comments or wherever I end up putting this because it's going to go everywhere. This is probably going to be a podcast episode. It might be up on YouTube. I don't know. But, uh, but thank you ladies so much for being here. I appreciate you so much. I hope to everybody that this was really helpful and encouraging and that you can see how just learning some of this basic information can really apply to all areas of your life and just how, how cool learning your design can be and how that can align so much if you are a, a person of faith, how that can really align and actually strengthen your faith and help you live into the design and purpose that God created for you here because we are all here for a purpose. There is something that we are supposed to accomplish in this life and learning these things um, just act as tools and resources to help us get there and accomplish those things sooner. So if you are a betrayed spouse and you're interested in working together, again, if it's above or below whatever uh, platform you are watching this on, uh, I will put a link to book a clarity call and I would love to help you and work with these uh, similar modalities as well. And um, so if you are struggling with anxiety and finding uh, you know, the fear of not being enough, please reach out to Kate. And if you're interested in some uh, learning how to apply your human design and 
and um, apply it to your family, check out Megan. And uh, we just hope that this was so encouraging to you. And we just thank you so much for being here today.